photos. Now stuff. I did. What? This is a Obscure Toy Files test file. I am your host, Boggs. This no, no, is. Start off, start off. Okay, go no, ahead. This is just a do it, do it. This is this is the cuff. So how are you feeling about doing it? Whatever way you want to do it. All right, let's just start all over. I just wasn't ready. Oh no, it's, you know, it's just, this is off the cuff. This is just a, something for the blooper reel. Toys. Yes. Mine. <laughs> These two belong to me. Elder Dragon has more in his bag. In my bag of mystery, kids. What do we got in the bag of mystery? What? what? We got Bizarro from the DC Primal Agent. Now, it may not be an obscure figure yet, but this is a cool line. Yes. And word of word of uh, word of the mouth, because I heard about this, is that Funko has lost the rights to do masses of the universe figures uh, because. They made this line. Oh, now, they, they it, can't do any. They can't do any masters products. Or like no, no, no more. No more master pops. Oh, that's weird. Oh, no, that's no. Actually, it was like the whole right. world is done with pops. Yeah, it's like that's okay. You don't have but to. But it was like, everything. look, they got cool masters of the universe style figures. Yeah. Now, see, I don't know what's up with Mattel, but it's the fact of the matter is this is like a toy line that everybody loves, and that you have also independent artists out there that are making their own toys. So I'm surprised Mattel hasn't tried to cash in on this big time because it's clearly it has left an impact on a generation, yeah. and this generation is trying to continue it, and so on. I agree. People like the stuff. Me uh, want to see more figures. Come on. Well, so for, for Bizarro, wouldn't that be he doesn't want to see more figures because he talks backwards? Uh -huh. Me not want more figures there. Okay, politically <laughs> correct now. <laughs> Use the right vernacular, Elder Nerd. Well, this is Potato Head in the bucket up parts. This is a uh, Mrs. Potato Head from 1996. That yes. We, I got at a store called Emerald City Collectibles, which is in the Summit Mall in Holbrook on Long Island in New York. And this was only 10 bucks, and it has its original sticker from some store I've never heard of before. It's 9.95, so we actually store, What is this uh, course store we never heard of before? Is it Alphabet? I don't know if it's a store or just a weird... The stickers are faded. It's not a store I recognize. It's not like Child World or KB or something. Uh, that's got to be analyzed. Uh-oh. Elder Nerd scanning device. No. It's okay, I'll wait. I'll just... Hey, here we wait. Oh, that's a familiar sound. Uh, let's see. Let's see. All right, sonic glasses. Never mind. <laughs> Get anything yet? No, not to see what it is. It's faded. Yeah, alphabets. Never heard of it. No. No. Never heard of that store. Well, if it's from 96, it could be very well gone by now. She was actually in really good shape. The box is very new. The contents still even have the plastic bag that they all came in. And the plastic tree that their her white parts were on is actually still in there. So they're pretty much open. Her spots. white parts? Her, well, there are parts on her that are white. We live in a general neutral age now. We got to be careful when we mention parts. I'm trying to word. Look, it, it's not what I'm. Listen, look, you get. You well, get okay. Every human being is built video, the same. You have feet. Right, you right, have, right, have right, arms and legs. This and is what I'm talking about. This is a parts tree, a sprue, if you will. Her arms must have been on it, and then they were popped off. You got to ride my butt about everything. It's because I made a comment about Bizarro talking this way. Uh, okay, well, you gotta you gotta take into account. I am a single person, so when you mention anything in the, in the related to the female and the species, yeah, we're gonna get in a lot of trouble for this, folks. This is like a thong from Mrs. Potato Head. This is not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, you can put it on. We're putting it on. Back in the box, Mrs. Potato Head is gonna go over here, away from Elder Nerd. <laughs> his composure again. But the real reason we're here to chit chat today is a cool line called Air Raiders. And imagine a week from now, this is like you're gonna be sitting there, and it's just like I accidentally posted this video. Imagine <laughs> my reaction. <laughs> accidentally, it's gonna take me like an hour to upload this. Yeah, video. we're gonna have one million hits in less than five seconds. So. I, I would laugh. I would laugh. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're gonna there... get in trouble for. That Elder Nerd guy made a thong joke. He shouldn't allowed to be doing that. I don't think anybody wants to see Mrs. Potato Head in a thong. I'm pretty sure Hasbro's. I bet you Mr. Potato Hood would. 
I stand corrected. <laughs> well Mr. played. Potato Head would probably want to see her in the song. Well played, Elder. Well played. Elder. You remember the song? You remember that song? Do you want mashed to talk potatoes? About, do you want to talk about air readers? Air readers? Yes. Yes. Uh, Incredible warning. Cool line. Yes. Take it so early from us so soon. Yes. No. Only Europe is in. And then it went <laughs> into clearance bins all over the country. These are case fresh from a oh, warehouse farm. Captain Nerfel. Captain Nerfel says these are cool. Okay, back you go. <laughs> I need to get a cutter on. We have to cut the tape on these. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What, what Just got to remember, we got to have a lot of room. When you do this, All right. okay, when we open up a box, first off, what you want to really do okay. is you want to appreciate the box. Yes. Smell the box. Just Study the box. Walk see the where 80s. the tape marks are because, okay, you only get one shot at this when you open it. Because if you open it the wrong way, because, you know, back in the day when you're, you know, what's the, 10-ish? What year was this? 87? Yeah, 87. I was 7. Yeah, yeah. When you're, when you're a bog at age 7, and most kids at that age are just like rip the package open. Oh, but no, we're 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 appreciate we're collector appreciatos, and so we got to appreciate the artwork too. So we want to want to preserve it for prosperity later on. So this way, if they ever uncover a time capsule in the future, and we left like a pile of aerators in here, <laughs> which conveniently just happened because we bought this uh, we bought these off of a gentleman named uh, Mr. Nevers, who is located in Washington, who got them from another fellow who had been for some reason stockpiling them in a warehouse and, and uh, for a better part of 30 something years. So these are case fresh from a big case because Asbury used to sell these in cases of 12. You got 12 storm daggers and you got 12 thunder claws and then they had a villain case where you got 12 wind seekers and 12 uh, wind razors, or sorry, six of each, 12 total. So we don't have uh, cases for these, but we generally get them right out of the box. So they're, these are as new as you can get. These have been sitting in a, these are as close as we, if, if we had a time machine held in we could have gotten better samples than this, but only slightly. Everybody's using the time machine, Michelle. It looks like, you know what, uh, you know what comes to mind when we say case fresh? And I think about this, that the fact that these have been sitting for a year. I think about the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I was oh, yeah. like, where did they put the Ark of the Covenant? <laughs> well, we have top men looking at it right now. And then you see that whole expanse yeah. of this endless warehouse where this whole dangerous artifacts is, and it's like all quiet. And it's like, and, that, and they left that mystery, you know, suspensively there until you got to uh, Indiana Jones and met the, uh, the Crystal Skull. That was the newest one, yeah. Yeah, that was the newest one. And then they kind of like... They like they found the warehouse. That was like because they had that car chase right through the warehouse and everything because oh, they yeah. were raiding the warehouse. It should have left that warehouse alone because I think that the um, because of the end of Raiders, it just left it other suggestion. that's like there is a warehouse out there, filled with really cool, weird, and dangerous stuff. And next to that are cases of air raiders. Yeah, because those things go together. But it was like it was like an unnecessary film uh, in, the Indiana Indiana Jones, in the Indiana Jones saga. And in case in point, an unnecessary character, but a cool character unless he takes off his mask. He keeps his mask on, he's a cool character, take it off, he's a one-heat. No, sorry. I don't want to start any Star Wars problems. Sim assembly required. Oh. So, may, 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 can I open it now? Or do you want to look at the box a bit more? I want to look at the box a little bit more. Look yeah. at how much artwork went into this. Yes, because this was a lot of work. The whole concept of Air Raiders was interesting because so much lore went into the story that nobody really knew about because Hasbro was trying to get a cartoon show made. And it was due to come out in fall of 87, but something happened and they weren't able to do it. Uh, Visionaries came out in 87. They were out in the fall, so maybe they got they were maybe they were closer to being put in production than Air Raiders was. As much as I hate it, it's like, okay, it's a play on words, but this is a pun. The 80s was a very visionary time. Yes. Toys really boomed. You had 70s, 70s was like up and coming, and then, just like, and then all of a sudden the 80s just exploded. It's like having the 60s all over again, no drugs. <laughs> and it was just, just like lots of toys, but lots of toys, and all the toys. If for all you know, it could have been people who were from the '60s that designed these toys. We don't know. Actually, but this does make sense. Yeah. Well, look at look at the uh, Roboforce. Those were like uh, uh, Forbidden Planet style robots, mm. and that was made in '84. So if anybody that's grew still up a good movie 60s. to this day. Hope they never remake it. Uh, <laughs> don't say that out loud. They might, make, they might remake it now. <laughs> don't let's hear it. Now. Coming soon. Don't from, remake it. I mean it. Coming don't soon. Micro Bay's. Production of Forbidden Planet. Hi, I'm Robbie the Robot. Boom, boom, boom. Explosions! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yes. Oh, but right. it's so. like, uh, we'll, we'll tap on the movies. There's like, one of the reasons why certain movies should not be remade is because you should remember them from the times that they were presented as. Yes, True. we are in a politically correct age. Yes, we have CGI. But you got to appreciate the imagination and effort that went into those movies. Now, the reason why Forbidden Planet stands out is because it gave us Robbie the Robot. And Robbie the Robot was like the biggest thing because way before Robbie the Robot, there was the Metropolis movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that gave us like the almost atonically correct female robot. That was, that's like your that uh, that's like film. your most early RC the was Transformers. That a, was that a sound film? Yes. That was a long ago. But they did bring it back and they just uh, gave it a whole new soundtrack and they had it like uh, they gave it to like Queen did the soundtrack for it. Oh that's cool. And it was like it was nicely done. You just gotta get past it that the fact that it's a silent movie. It's just like if you really wanna like prepare yourself for like if you watch a lot of anime, I think you could all sit through a silent movie. No hundred percent. Okay, we done. <laughs> Air Raider's no. Storm Dagger includes two Air Raider soldiers, a missile, and an air cannon. Now, okay, remember, two Air Raiders. Their box. Look, it even says it on the box. Two. 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 Two of them. Okay, but on the back of the box, you've got this incredibly artistic display. Yeah, they This really is like, okay, everybody that's like all hopped up on G1 Transformers. Okay, can relate to this because on back of every gene, what, uh, providing you bought like Optimus Prime, anybody that's into like the bigger things. Oh, yeah, like the box you, figures. The, the box figures art of Transformers is phenomenal. Yeah. This, Case in point, Optimus also... Prime, people. <laughs> Superman, you were hot. <clears throat> but Hasbro also made this. Hasbro was very. Uh, that was the whole thing about the 80s that's different from today is that the artwork on the box is what really sold the toy. I mean, you look at this thing, it's ripping through this you know, deserted landscape, and there's two guys, a man in the controls of this ship, and you go, that looks pretty cool. Will it be as cool as the box when we open it up? I don't know. I'm going to cut the tape. Okay. What you want to do, do you want to do is just, like, always locate the tape. Okay? And everybody's like, what's the big deal about the tape? Well, if you rip the tape up, it's going to rip off the artwork. It's so it's wise that you cut, you know, yeah, one stroke. A box cut. One stroke. You don't have to do two, and you just go... Down. I'm going to do that side. Okay, we're he's going to do it. Very, he's very, gonna. Are we ready? Are we ready? Are ready, 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 ready to like. You only made, it was maybe slim. Alright, ready? Good. <laughs> All the air comes out. Reaganomics. No! Oh, dear <laughs> Lord, no! Oh! It is still sealed. New toy smell! Is there anything else in there? Oh, wait. Ooh, a brochure. Oh. New from Hasbro. Wow. Oh, look! Instruction booklet. Also, mm -hmm. something not a lot of people are aware of is that all Air Raiders vehicles, of which there are 10. Okay. Fox, do you want to cut the other side? Do we need to? Well, we're showing them how to open this up, and it's like, yeah, they're going to want to preserve the package. I guess we can cut the tape. You can always retake it. There you go. Oh. Well, I, was gonna, I was gonna leave it open. Oh! I just, I, no, that's oh. fine if it's cut. It's not gonna make the end of the world. And look, here's a new concept. Okay, it is just like, if you ever want to preserve this, okay, you can just flatten the box, see, mm -hmm. like this, and you get like an artist portfolio, and you like, and you put it in, and it's like you'll have like a scrapbook, and you keep all the packages nice and crisply safe. Hmm. Too bad you can't do that with half of the G.I. Joe vehicles out there. Well, they're a little bigger. Yeah, well, yeah. You ever have oh, the Crusader the... Shuttle? I didn't notice that. No, I have not. The what, are those, shuttle. what are those little marks on the instruction the things for? Ah. What do you think those are for? This is a part in the story. Yeah. One of the things about all the packaging for all the aerated vehicles, of which there were 10, they include instructions, and on the opposite side of that instructions are information about Airlandia. That really explains the story like 10,000 times better than the commercials ever did. This, and since uh, if you're going to get any of the vehicles and get them new, get the Storm Dagger first because it comes with the first part. Because if you look on the bottom, it actually says uh, first in a series. So this is the first page of like this uh, Tomb of Erlandia, I guess, if you lack of a better word. Yeah, it's like the Chronicles of Erlandia. Yeah, yeah, the Chronicles of Erlandia. The so that, four main. It's like, let's like, like, okay. I would like to know the name of the person that actually did the uh, the trans the, the the voicing narration for the cartoons when they always like just like when you came on the cartoons it was like for Transformers you knew you were getting a good deal and it's like 
today on the Transformers. So, what were you in that voice for a minute? The formation of Irelandia. There you go. Not to be associated with Long Island, Irelandia. But, um... Irelandia. Years ago, a huge comet hurtling through outer space flashed across the skies of the planet Irelandia and tore away most of its breathable atmosphere. The entire planet was thrown off its axis in a series of devastating hurricanes, volcanoes, eruptions, and monsoons permanently altered the surface of the planet. In the midst of this terrible upheaval, Arizar, a high-ranking general in Irelandia's top-notch air god, seized control of the government and established his own evil monarchy. Okay, let me cut in point here is that a lot of these lines, like, and it's like a lot of these lines all start with a great disaster in order to bring, you know, about these characters. And it's like, okay, so anyway, as we go on, why is that so relevant, did I say? Is because look at Visionary. Visionary's Primos lost its atmosphere. Yeah, Prismos had uh, something happened when all the, the three suns lined up, and it caused uh, all technology not to work anymore, and it brought back the age of magic and robotics. Oh, oh, yes, oh. which is toy line that is still around to this day. Robotics. Robotics, because they did animation for robotics. There's one two-hour movie out there. Oh, neat. You can YouTube it, and um, they and they have like the. Um, it was a meteor storm that that nearly wiped out the planet, and everybody went into suspended animation. It was really fun, though. It was like these story narratives. Okay, case in point. Now, if Asbro ever wanted to bring this line back, Nerf technology right here at Ooh. its early stages. Nerf. You gotta really put pressure on it. Oh, chilly cold. Holy shnikey! We can prove it right now. We know it works. Alright, so that was it. Where'd that the, missile go? Right next to the hound. Car. I found it, sir. Okay, good. Is it all from the uh, formation of Irlandia? No, there's more. I'm gonna read it. Okay. Let me get a little bit of water here because doing that voice is like it's it's really rough on the throat. It's like when you do Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Batman. What the heck are you? I'm Batman. Okay, so now part two of our formation of Irlandia. Let's listen, children. The people of Irlandia fought back bravely, but these unarmed, peace-loving people were no match for the Emperor's well-equipped, well-trained tyrants of wind. Sympathetically, all who opposed Arazah and his tyrants were imprisoned in the dungeons beneath his newly constructed Irlandia. Okay, let me get the Transformers voice narrative. The people of Irlandia banded together determined to stop the evil Arazah. This violent group of rebels became known as the Air Raiders, champions of freedom and justice. Together, they battle the Emperor and his evil tyrants of the wind. The Air Raiders' goal is one day live in peace again and restore free air to free men everywhere. Now that's just the start of this. Yes. This is just the start. There is actually a much more bigger story arc that goes on. Oh, please don't leave us on a cliffhanger. Well, you have to buy the toys. <laughs> we have, I think, part two is in the other box. So as we go through these, you'll find it out. But first, we're going to... The instructions are on the back end, so we're going to see if we can oh, put this okay. together. Okay, well, see, I was just folding up. See, I'm a folder, and that's like, you can call it corralling, because like, when you take instructions and you want to put them back, and you want to keep them minty fresh shape, you put them back in the way you found them. Still new on the tree, the sprues. Mm. Ah, the 80s plastic. 